to the house of God uh -huh. now for your own soul's sake. See, that's why the Bible is redundant. The Lord says things over and over because we're stiff-necked, hard-headed people. Jesus. Calm down and listen to one another. And more importantly, listen to this fight. Right? Yeah, so one of the things that one of the things that God's God honors. So let's go, let me ask you a question. Are you married? Okay, give me Hebrews 13 and 4. It's one of the things that we should be looking for is we should be looking for a, a righteous mate and to get married and to bring and to have a family. Okay, because that's one of the things that's gonna change the situation that we're in. We find ourselves in down here on Penn North and in Baltimore and in black communities in general. Read that. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all. So the most high, he honors marriage. He said marriage is honorable in all. Are you married, sis? Yeah, I'm married. Okay, all praises. That's good. Uh, I'm married, but I'm separated because my married husband, he out, he out the street like this. That's the same. He out the street like right. he out That's the street the like this. So if you're married and separated, that is a sin. I'm separated because well, it's not, it's not, a, it's not a sin. It's no, it's not a sin to be, it's actually not a sin to be separated. No, nah, when, when, nah, when, we, when we read when we read in the Bible, it tells us. Let, let's get the scripture. Give me that. Give me that. First Corinthians uh, seven. Yep. Let's get that. So God honors marriage, but when there's but when there's trouble in the marriage, there are solutions. I'm gonna show you what he, I'm gonna show you what he don't like. First Corinthians chapter seven verse fifteen. But if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. So it says. If you have an unbelieving spouse, if you believe and you say, look, I want, I want to learn how to keep these commandments. I like what I'm hearing. I'm going to put the fringes on. I'm going to give me a nice dress. I'm going to start keeping the Sabbath, keeping the commandments. But you have a spouse that's unbelieving. And it's not saying you leave right away. But over time, you know, you've been going six months, a year, two years, three years, and you go, okay, he ain't never, because you're supposed to be trying to convert him I with tried. your godliness, which is what we just read in First Peter 3, okay? But what it's going to tell you is, is that once you come to the realization that this person is just unbelieving, or if they depart, it says, let them depart. That's what I it says, you're not under bondage to stay with them yes. if they don't believe. Yes, okay, go ahead. First Corinthians chapter 7, verse 11. Uh -huh. But, and if she depart, let her remain unmarried. If you depart, you're supposed to remain unmarried, okay? But if the if he depart, you let him go, okay? Or be reconciled to her husband. So if y'all separated, be separated for a time until he get his act together, it says, and then y'all come back together. Go ahead. And let not the husband put away his wife, uh -huh. but to the rest speak I, not the Lord. Uh -huh. If any brother have the wife that believe it not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. So it's saying, if, if, a, if a man have a wife, or if a wife have a husband, do you listen to this? So it says, if a man has a wife, or a wife has a husband, and they don't believe, but for the sake of, they, the, for the sake of you, because he love you, he go, you know what? I don't necessarily be like that, but because I love you, I'm going to go ahead and just keep the commandments anyway. So, yeah, I'll keep the Sabbath with you. That's called being pleased to dwell. So because he's pleased to dwell with you, he'll do what the Bible says. Right. It says, if you have a husband like that, don't leave. Stay with that man. Or if you have, or a man has a, a, a wife like that, she's supposed to stay with him. Or he's supposed to stay with her. So God don't have, give me, give me Malachi 2.16. God don't like divorce. He hate divorce. 
That's what he hates. Okay, he hates the boys. Give me that. Malachi 2.16. Right. Understood. Right. Malachi chapter 2, verse 16. For the Lord thy, for the Lord the God of Israel saith that he hated putting away the Lord God of Israel. He said he hate he hate the boys. Yes. He hated the boys. That was never what was intended. Yes. Okay, what was intended is that a man and a woman supposed to prove each other that they both gonna keep the commandments. They supposed to come together. They supposed to get married. They supposed to have children and raise a righteous family. That's, right. That's what was intended. That's what's gonna change Baltimore. Mm -hmm. That's okay, right. that's what's gonna change Baltimore. Right. What the problem is is that the problem that we having right now is that we have single women raising kids. You ever heard the expression a a, a, a woman can't raise a man? Right, I know that. You know that, right? Okay, just like a man, a man can't raise a woman. Exactly. It's certain things that a woman has to teach a girl. Right. It's certain things that a man has to teach his son. That's, right. That's why we need the family. That's why we need the marriage. We need the. It takes two. You know what I'm saying? Y'all yep. agree? Yep. All I praises. Agree. All agree. praises. So, what are some of the things that y'all can start working on to change ourselves now? He brought out the Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Let me show you something else. Give me 1 Corinthians 11. Give me 1 Corinthians 11. So you'll know this going forward. Okay, because I'm sure I'm sure both of y'all pray, right? I pray. Do y'all pray? You pray? You don't pray? Hmm? I nah. pray. I pray, but okay. not like I should. Okay. I'm trying well, to. I'm, I'm going to tell you something. Down. Believe it or not, you know, with John 931, it says, God don't hear the prayer of sinners. Right. So you got to get yourself right first anyway. You see what I'm saying? So, as you're getting yourself right, prayer is going to be part of that process. Go ahead. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. Uh -huh. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So, he's going to give you an order. He said the head of every man is Christ. Go ahead. And the head of the woman is the man. So, your husband is your head. Now, if you're separated or if you are divorced or if you are single, then the leadership your leadership, if you're not dealing with, you know, is if you separate it and you're not dealing with the man at all, then the leadership in your congregation, the elders of the congregation, they are your head. They are your heads of protection. Okay. So you go to them for counsel and for guidance. Yes. Okay, go ahead. And the head of Christ is God. So even Christ has a head. The head of Christ is God. So you got the most high God, you got Christ, yes. you got man, yes. and you got woman. Yes. Okay? That's the order. That's the divine order. That's also the order of creation. Okay, read. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. So when a man prays or prophesies, right now we're prophesying because we're reading out of the Bible. Right now you're in the midst of prophecy. And because you're answering questions back and forth, you're also prophesying. Okay? So it says when a man does that, he should not have his head, on, his head covered. So as you see, none of the men out here have their head covered. Exactly. Go ahead. But every woman that prayeth or prophesied with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head. So when a woman, right, so you supposed to have, y'all supposed to have y'all head covered. I covered it with the sun beating down on me. Understood? I'm Understood. That's why I, when I put my hood. Step under the, step under the. I don't want to step on the earth. Okay. So just going, you going forward. When y'all pray or when y'all in the midst of dealing with this Bible, right. cover your head. That's it. That's biblical. Yes. All right. Give me, um, Give me, uh, give me, keep, let's get on some Sabbath scriptures. You know today is the Sabbath, right? Yes. Yeah, give me that. Exodus 20, verse 8. So, the, another thing that we got to do in coming back to our heritage and, understand, heritage and understanding that we're the Israelites is we got to learn how to keep the Sabbath day. Yeah. Okay, that's, a, that's God's high holy day. Yes. Okay, he gave us all of the days that we're supposed to celebrate. We celebrate all of them. We celebrate Christmas. We don't, but I'm saying we've learned in America to celebrate Christmas, to celebrate birthdays, yeah, celebrate Easter, celebrate believe. New Year's Day. We're not supposed to celebrate none of that. Birthdays, okay? He gave us everything that we're supposed to celebrate right here. Shalom Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. Give me that. Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. Uh -huh. Remember the Sabbath day. It says, remember the Sabbath day. He knew we was going to forget. He knew we was going to get taught something else when we came over here. Okay? Now we talk that the Sabbath day is Sunday. 
Okay? But watch what the Bible says it is. To keep it holy. We're supposed to keep that day holy. Holy according to Leviticus 20, 26 means separate. So this one day that the Lord is ordaining is going to be separate from all the rest of the days. Okay? okay? And meaning that on that day, you're going to do something different than you do all other days. Yeah. Go ahead. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. So for the first six days of the week, you, that's the days you got to labor and make your money. All right. What, what's, the, what's the first day of the week? What's, what's the first day of the week, sis? First day of the week. Sunday. Okay. Yeah, we all agree. Yep. First day of the week is Sunday. So what's the read on? Watch this. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. So it says, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. So what's the seventh day? Sunday being the first. Yeah, Saturday. Be Saturday. That'd be Saturday, yeah. which is today, right? Yeah, yeah. So it says, today is the Sabbath of the Lord. Yeah. Now, the day actually starts. Y'all know when the day starts? Hold that. Give me Genesis 1 and 5. Do y'all know when a day starts? At noon. He said at noon. Let me lie to you and tell you the truth. It don't start at noon, but I... I it don't. We gonna we gonna read it. Do we all right? Listen, listen, sis. Are we gonna be lead, are we gonna be lead the Bible? I, I know I know who I am in God. Okay, but are we gonna be lead, so? Do you believe the Bible? I know who I am. Who you are? Does who you, you are you believe the Bible? Morning. You wake yourself up or God wake you up? God wake me up. It started new. You have a good day. It started. She said, "Okay, well, let's read out the Bible. When, when the day start? Genesis chapter one, verse five. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. So what makes up a day? Watch, watch, read it, read it again. And we're going to take our time, sis, it's okay. And God called the light day, and darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. So what did he say? What was the first day? The evening. So when did it start and when did it end? So from evening to the next evening, okay, you got four parts. You got the evening, you got the night, you got the morning, you got the day. Then you got the evening again. So one cycle, evening, night, morning, day, that's a day. And then the evening starts the next day. So from evening to evening. So the day starts in the evening when the sun goes down. That's the start of a new day, according to the Bible. Okay, let's go back to uh, Exodus. So I brought that out to bring out this. The Sabbath day or the seventh day starts when? On what day? On Saturday. Nope. Sunday. On Friday. Yeah, Friday. What? See, think about it. Think about it. The first okay. day of the week, the first day of the week starts tonight at sundown. So tonight at tonight at sundown technically is Sunday. Okay. Right? Uh-huh. So then from sundown to sundown is Monday, evening to evening. Sundown to sundown is Tuesday. Sundown to sundown. So when you get to the evening of Friday, that's the start of the seventh day. To the end of Saturday, when the sun go down, that's the end of the seventh day. So from Friday sundown to Saturday sundown, that's your Sabbath day. And that's when all of these Sabbath things that we're about to bring out, that's when they apply. All right. Got it? I got it. All right. Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Uh -huh. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Uh -huh. In it thou shalt not do any work. So what's the first rule on the Sabbath? From Friday sundown to Saturday sundown, we're not supposed to do what? No work. No work. There it is. That's easy. It he, is. We got a biblical day off. Mm -hmm. That's every week. Every week we got from Friday, Sunday, Friday sundown to Saturday sundown, we got that day off. Okay. So that's, but that's ordained. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Right. And then while we have that day off, there's some other things we got to do. Read on. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, uh -huh. thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. Uh -huh. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth and sea, and all that is in them is, and rested the seventh day. So when it says thy maid servant, thy man servant, and all that, it means that you're supposed to have that day off and everybody in your house is supposed to have that day off. Okay, so if you have a business, your man servant or maid servant would be your employees. Right. So on that day, businesses are also closed. So none of this beauty mark, all of this stuff is supposed to be closed oh, right now. Okay. Ain't no business supposed to be going on. Give me that Nehemiah. Watch this. Nehemiah 10, 31. 
Because it's, it's also, we're going to show you something else. Don't supposed to be no buy and selling. Because if I can't work, how can I buy and sell? If I'm buying and selling, that means, uh, if I'm going to buy something, that means somebody else is working. Because yes. they get to sell me something. Mm -hmm. So we're not supposed to be buying and selling either. Because now we cause our brothers to sin because now they're working. Oh, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So it all go together. Watch this. Nehemiah chapter 10 verse 31 uh -huh. and if the people of the land bring where or any victuals so the people of the land is talking about is this particular verse was talking about the other nations would come in to sell us stuff but it's the same thing today we don't own that beauty mark we don't own the subway sandwiches we don't own none of these businesses no more we should because they're in our community yes. but we don't right. okay so it says if the people of the land bring where or victuals meaning any kind of merchandise or food okay go ahead on the seventh day to sell on the Sabbath day to sell it to us go ahead that we would not buy it of them on the Sabbath uh, or on this holy day so on the Sabbath and on our holy days we don't buy and sell okay so every Saturday Friday Sunday Saturday Sunday you don't buy don't spend no money hope you also help you save money right because think about it when do most people if most people get paid and got a job when do they get paid right. just got paid <laughs> Friday night, right. And what you do? You go out and party, you spend up all your money on Saturday, you're broke. So by keeping God's commandments, it naturally help you avoid that pitfall. Okay? So when you wake up on Sunday, guess what? The first day of the week, you still got all your money. I guess. You didn't go out Friday and get drunk, get high, and, and blow your money. Exactly, yes. Okay? But give me um give me Exodus 16, yes sir. Give me that. But we're going to get something else on how to keep the Sabbath holy. Exodus chapter 16, verse 23. Uh -huh. And he said unto them, This is that which the Lord had said tomorrow is the rest of the holy Sabbath unto the Lord. Bake that which you will bake today, and see that you will see. And that which remaineth over lay up for you to be kept until the morning. So what this going into is, it's saying on... Do you remember, do you, 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 how familiar are you with the Bible? Do you remember when they was going out and collecting the manna and all of that, when he was giving us manna to eat? Uh, I remember that. I okay. Remember what, what this is going into is going into the prep day. So on the Sabbath day, we don't cook hot food. Right. Okay. So what this is saying is the day before, it says bake or seed. Seed just means boil. Right. It means cook whatever you're going to cook to eat on the Sabbath day on the day before. So on Friday, we call it prep day. Right. You cook whatever you want to eat on Saturday the day before. Right. That way, you're not in the kitchen sweating and laboring on the sun on Sunday, on, on Saturday. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So you're going to prep all your food the day before, and then on Saturday, you don't do no cooking. So we don't cook on a Sabbath day either. Okay? Now, you don't have to. You can wake up and eat a bowl of cereal. You can make a sandwich. You can eat some potato salad. You can. You, know what you just don't. We don't light fire. Give me a kid on no fire. Don't kindle fire on the Sabbath day. Is that Exodus 35? Yeah, give me that. So watch this. Let me get one more and then I'm going to bring the office up. What? Exodus chapter 35, verse 3. Uh -huh. You shall not kindle no fire throughout your habitations upon the Sabbath day. So, so we're not going to kindle fire on the Sabbath day to cook either. Okay, so on the, on the Sabbath day, just to review, we're not going to work, we're not going to buy and sell. We're not going to cook on the Sabbath. And that's how you keep your Sabbath holy. And I'm going to give you one last one, which is also very important. Give me that Leviticus uh, 23 and I think verse 2. Or verse 3. So another other thing we do on the Sabbath day, the last thing we do is we congregate. Congregate means come together with believers. Okay? Give me that. Leviticus chapter 23, verse 2. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, Concerning the feast of the Lord, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations. So a holy convocation is a, is a large gathering. Okay, go ahead. Even these are my feasts. Six days shall work be done. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest and holy convocation. You shall do no work therein. So it's saying the seventh day is a holy convocation. I mean, you're supposed to get together. Convocation is, like I said, it's a large gathering. So on that day, you don't buy, you don't sell, you don't cook, you don't work, and you come together with like believers. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision the tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission.
Minor murmuring, omitting and missing the mark Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark We on Paul's mission We out on the road Purple and gold From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana Sierra Leone 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are how our men repented at heart The scriptures is proof IUIC, we deliver the truth.